I was like, I was like, that's really not right. Like, yeah, how would you share? What's up? That would be on Facebook. Good morning. Thanks everyone for coming today. We appreciate uh, Dive In, Take Donuts for you. As you know, uh, we have been conducting an investigation of Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Uh, we feel as a general matter that it's a high calling for every citizen and it's one of the noblest things you can do to scrutinize and look into our public officials. And our goal in this regard has been nothing but the truth right from the start. Now we have so much to cover today. Um, the young man who made these allegations, Hunter Kelly, has since recanted them and has had a lot to say about us. We have video, we have pictures, and we've got a lot to talk about today. Jake. Well, there, there are these stories out there, these, these reports about a kidnapping that took place of a young 19-year-old man. Uh, various media outlets have repeated this, everyone from uh, the Daily Beast to the New Yorker and so on. And today we will completely elucidate uh, what exactly took place here. We will show evidence that will make 100% clear exactly what happened. Uh, and that no one was coerced, no one was even so much as encouraged to take any particular action. And we're going to lay that all out in a series of tapes, uh, in a series of pictures, and much more. So that's what we're going to do today. And then we're gonna take questions. And obviously, the important part is here, we wanna give the press a chance to cross-examine our claims and uh, be able to get the truth out here. And we're confident that our partners in the press will be able to do that. So you've seen a lot of claims like this one on the screen here, this claim that uh, there was some sort of kidnapping, it involved Subway sandwiches, uh, there was a 19-year-old involved. Uh, this is a tweet from Lachlan Marque at the Daily Beast, uh, calls himself a journalist, and talks about uh, this poor 19-year-old who was uh, dragged here from rural Michigan and uh, you know, forced to make accusations that, that this young man woke up at 11 a.m. and and surprise, there was these things posted on the internet against his will. That's what they've talked about, uh, but that's not what happened at all. And uh, this is just one example of a, a series of things that are going to play into litigation, which we're also going to announce a little bit later today. So the first things first, you need to understand, Hunter Kelly is not a 19-year-old child. Uh, he's, he's not a, a kid um, by any stretch of the imagination. This is an adult. Uh, he's someone who is older than me by a few months. And this is him here in a text message letting me know his age. That way I could assist him in booking his plane ticket. Now understand, if he goes to the airport and that's not his actual birth date, he can't get on the plane. Uh, he was born October 3rd, 1997. He's 21 years old uh, and he's an adult. So this idea that could he contract, could he sign, is this a child? He's old enough to drink, he's old enough to serve, he's old enough to carry a gun. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the facts. So the New Yorker, uh, you know, leaves this out, the Daily Beast calls him a 19-year-old kid, several other outlets, there's, there's really too many to name. So this is the first thing to understand is who this uh, gentleman is, who this young man is. Uh, he has a college degree, he's 21 years old, he's an adult, he was not coerced. He's a big guy, he's, in fact, he's, I'd say he's six foot tall, uh, 300 pounds, I mean, he's a big dude, uh, not someone who can be pushed around. Hunter gave us this, this story. He had his truth to tell about uh, what exactly happened to him at the hands of Mayor Pete. I had made known uh, via social media that there were these rumors about Mayor Pete, and there are. There are rumors about all of these people, many of which we plan to look into. And he had told us precisely what happened at the Mayflower Hotel on February 19th, the very first thing we did to even know if he was worth the plane ticket, because a lot of people reached out. Some of them were credible, others were not. Uh, but to even understand whether this was worth our time, we looked into Mayor Pete's FEC records to find that he was indeed at the Mayflower Hotel <clears throat> on the 19th of February when Hunter said he was here visiting uh, his sister who lives, in the, who lives in the area. Hunter spent a lot of time in D.C. 
and uh, this is what he said. He laid out a story, and the very first thing that we did was cross-examine his story. We are also in the process of obtaining security footage from the Mayflower Hotel. We have that process underway. It could take a little while, but we will have that soon as well. And so Hunter had this allegation, and of course, as you do, in Jack's case as a lawyer, in my case as an advocate, the very first thing that we had him do was sign a statement uh, that laid out in detail what his accusation was. You can see that statement right here. Uh, he signed the statement. He was not under any sort of uh, coercion. He wasn't kidnapped. I mean, all, all of these claims are, are ridiculous. He signed this statement, and he attested to, in detail, what he claims happened, which was a uh, disgusting, uh, essentially, date rape at the Mayflower Hotel. This is his statement. This is his truth, as he told it to us. And we still believe this story for, for a number of, uh, of reasons. Now, what we're going to show you today is some video. Now, you can see the timestamp on this video. It is taken at 3.50 p.m. Uh, by somebody who was in the house. Uh, so not 11 a.m., not 10 a.m., uh, but 3.50 p.m., well into the day, well after news reports had circulated, well after dozens of reporters had contacted Mr. Kelly, uh, this video was taken. Uh, there's been a lot made about tapes, there's been a lot made about video, and this is a video that uh, we feel speaks and, and says a lot. And again, it was taken at 3.50 p.m. that day. So in this video, I'm going to point out a number of things that completely throw out this idea that there was coercion, there was, there was force, that, that anybody was forced to do uh, anything. So beginning with the video, First thing you can see here is somebody's doing the dishes. Uh, there was, you know, just a normal atmosphere in the house, uh, not an atmosphere of an active kidnapping scene. Uh, somebody's doing the dishes. There's, there's no force. There's no fear. Right in front of Hunter here, as you're about to see, is the computer with the Twitter account open that he controlled. Now, this is what he was doing is basically going through his direct messages to his Twitter account and assessing which reporter he wanted to give an exclusive on-camera interview to. He ultimately decided to place a call to Caitlin Fulmer at ABC and to Sarah Murray at CNN. Now, Ms. Murray uh, omits this from her reporting on CNN on reliable sources this weekend. So he's got the computer in front of him. That's the first thing that you can see. He's in full control of the Twitter account, of the Medium account. Everything uh, that was posted was done with his express permission and, in fact, by him. In fact, we went so far as to have him physically press the buttons uh, for a number of reasons. And he's checking with us. Is, is 8 p.m. okay, he asked. Is 8 p.m. okay? Because CNN Sarah Murray was preparing to come over with a camera and film him at 8 p.m. to tell his truth about Mayor Pete. And again, this video is taken at 3.50 p.m., uh, not at 11 a.m. So this idea that, you know, he was coerced, well, he'd be using that phone of his to call 911, I would think, if this were some sort of kidnapping scene, uh, not to call CNN, not to call ABC. And uh, having actually listened to those calls, I can tell you that there was no, please help me, send the police, send a SWAT team, I'm being kidnapped. That's not what he was saying. What he was saying was, please come to me, do a TV interview. I want to lay out my truth about Mayor Pete. And that's what he wanted to do. Uh, there was no coercion here. There was no uh, atmosphere of fear or, or force. The other thing that you're going to see, and this is just a minor detail, is that he's got a Starbucks uh, caramel frappuccino in front of him on the table. Now, Hunter had come with us earlier in the day, and he had wanted Starbucks. So we took him to Starbucks right around the corner. We're also working on getting uh, that tape as well. Uh, he walked in, he got his caramel frappuccino. Uh, most forced uh, coercion type of events that I see involve guns, they involve knives, they don't involve uh, caramel frappuccinos. Just another minor detail that, where you can see he's going out in public through us, uh, with us throughout the day, uh, and then later in the day he went to get his hair cut uh, just around the corner. He wanted his hair to look good uh, for his on-camera interviews. He requested a very expensive haircut. Uh, he was taken around the corner and he was given a tremendous uh, haircut. He actually asked to go to a very expensive hair salon, which is the hair gallery, which is right 
that away. And so we took him there, again, in preparation for what he thought would be CNN and ABC that night. And those are just the media calls we happen to observe or catch on tape. There could have been many others. Uh, we have no idea. One point I want to say, now, we believe, we continue to believe that Hunter's story, as he originally told it to us, and as he signed his statement of fact and belief, is true. We continue to believe that without question. One thing that he received throughout the day was, a, was any number of threatening calls. We could hear them on speakerphone. We don't know who they were from. We have no idea, but there were a lot of people calling him, trying to talk him out of telling his truth. And that went on all day long. And Well, I mean, I, I've heard several of these calls. Some of, some of those calls were from his parents. Uh, in several cases, his parents called him and they threatened him and said, Hunter, we don't care what happened to you. We're getting hundreds of calls and your mom is going to get fired from the restaurant. They were worried that they were going to lose their jobs. Reporters were calling his parents endlessly and he was intimidated out of telling his truth. We watched this happen in real time. It was a concern that we had and we don't know who else got to his parents, perhaps functionaries from the DNC or, or others, uh, but we do know uh, that he received a number of threatening calls, uh, both from his parents, text messages, uh, vile messages that I'm not going to repeat using homophobic language, and uh, just, just really disgusting, uh, just really disgusting threats. So our next slide is is an important, is an important uh, presentation here. There is this idea that that has been put out there by Hunter in the wake of this, after being intimidated, that he was somehow forced to make statements, that he was. Uh, coerce that he was not in control, that he just woke up at 11 a.m. and lo and behold, there were these accounts out there, there were things happening. Well, I can tell you that the Medium account received many, many reports. The Medium account received dozens of reports that, that this is a fake account, that this could be anybody, this isn't real. And so Medium support reached out to Hunter and they said, Hunter, we need pictures of your ID. Hunter says, can you please take pictures of me holding my ID? Said, sure. Uh, the first picture wasn't clear enough. This is at 5.32 p.m. So again, timeline here. This is at 5.32 p.m. This is well after uh, this alleged incident happened where he's out of control. He, do he, he doesn't know what's going on. Uh, the first picture was not clear enough. That was a picture of uh, his, his ID. And uh, it, the text was just not clear enough. One of the things that you can see in that picture, though, is that his phone is right in front of him. Again, full access to his phone. I think that if he were being coerced, if he were being kidnapped, he would uh, call 911 and not uh, CNN and not ABC and others. Uh, but, you know, he had his phone and he wasn't, you know, he's very relaxed. He wasn't in any way, shape or form uh, coerced or, or kept against his will. He's told a number of stories. All of these stories are false. Uh, and again, these pictures are taken at 532, at which point he is on board. He wants to go forward. He wants to tell his truth. Uh, and then later, I would say probably 45 minutes later, if memory serves, uh, he just left. And, and of course, there was you know, nothing we could do to, to stop that, nothing we were going to try to do. Again, he wasn't encouraged, he wasn't coerced. Nothing like this uh, took, took place. So let's talk about the Daily Beast story for a moment, where they allege that there are these tapes. There are these tapes of us trying to recruit someone to make allegations. That's what the Daily Beast has claimed. They don't have a named source for these tapes. They don't have a location for this alleged meeting. They won't play the tape. I encourage them to include the tape in their story. They won't do that. We've also invited them to plug right in, uh, to play part or all of their tape right here on these speakers and uh, let the world hear this uh, tape. But uh, unfortunately, they're not willing to do that. They won't play even a portion of this tape. They won't name a source. Uh, they won't even provide a transcript because apparently the tape was so low quality that you couldn't even hear what was what was said. So how that tape is evidence of some grand conspiracy uh, is 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 just egregious. Uh, there there is absolutely no evidence that anyone was recruited in any way, shape, or form. To speak to this as a lawyer, I can tell you the Beast had every opportunity to include a lot of information in that story. Okay, let's say they want to protect their source. Their source. They don't play the tape. They could have had a transcript of the tape, not a partial transcript of the tape. How about a few words of the tape? How about five or six words of the tape? The only thing in there is they claim that there's some expert who matched uh, Jacob's voice to something. 
and even that's not clear. So let me say this. We will give our friends at the Beast until Friday, high noon, which is the 10th of May, this Friday, which is exactly two days and two hours from now, to release the tape. If they do not, we will immediately put in motion our legal team to file a $100 million defamation suit against the Beast and its corporate parent. And, and, and the point being is, th this is insane. You cannot make claims. You, and what we've seen is this pattern of reaching a conclusion and then working backwards and hoping that you can cobble together facts. The best they have is that some independent, they are claim independent expert uh, from Dearborn, Michigan, of all places, uh, claims that the high harmonies roughly match my voice profile. Uh, that's insanity. That is not evidence. I could, I could pull out any number of tapes where high harmonies match Kamala Harris, and obviously those tapes would not uh, be considered evidence. Uh, so we're going to continue vetting candidates. We are going to file this litigation in the absence of this tape being released. I talked to the reporter, Lachlan Marquet, last night, encouraged him to come here to play the tape for everyone to hear, for the world to hear, parts of it, all of it, some of it, uh, and he won't do that. He won't release a transcript, and so it's looking more and more like litigation uh, will be uh, initiated. So we'll move on now. That's enough about Hunter Kelly and Mayor Pete. We want you to understand something is now begins the 2020 election cycle. And Jacob and I are committed to finding the truth. We want you to think of this home, 1599 North Colonial Terrace, as the center for election 2020. Election 2020 has begun. Think of this as the center. Now, one thing we're noticing it's not just with Mayor Pete, although there are many rumors about him. There are rumors all over the internet about so many of these candidates. For instance, Jacob alluded earlier to Elizabeth Warren. We know she's lied about being an Indian on television in many different fora. But the internet is rife with rumors that maybe she lied on loan forms, which would be a serious federal crime. And so what we've done is we've initiated hundreds of FOIA requests, both on Mayor Pete and others, including Elizabeth Warren. We just filed a number of FOIA requests with the Small Business uh, Association, uh, where allegedly she lied about her ethnicity on, on loan forms. Obviously, there's, there's confirmed reports that uh, Joe Biden's son married his, his other son's widow, his brother's widow. There, there are creepy, bizarre rumors about all these people. Willie Brown's claims about Kamala. We're going to look into all of these claims. And as Jack said, we encourage them to come here, come here and clear this up. The only candidate we found uh, who doesn't have rumors is Bernie. He's the only one that we found where there, there are no rumors about Bernie, as you will as you I mean, a lot of these things, I mean, we because of our prominence on the internet, on Twitter and social media, here's what we want to do. We incur, we're all about finding the truth. This firm is all about the truth, as it was with Mayor Pete. We encourage all of these candidates to come here. We will allow us to investigate these rumors. We will give, you've heard of the good housekeeping seal of approval, we will give the Wool Berkman political seal of approval for 2020 if we vet you and all of these rumors are proven untrue. For instance, I mean, if you look at, look at, go back to Kamala Harris, Willie Brown, the former prestigious mayor of San Francisco, he's accused her of being a longtime prostitute in California politics. Those are serious allegations. Or are they true? We're continuing our investigation of Mayor Pete. Uh, there are all kinds of rumors. People have said he's been to, uh, Oh, uh, bisexual orgies, uh, been with she males, all kinds of stuff. Is this true? We don't know, but we want to investigate this. We encourage all of these people, frankly, including Mayor Pete, come here, come here to 1599, and we will investigate. All we want is the truth. And, and if we investigate the rumors you want investigated, we will then provide the Wool Berkman political seal of approval. And, and, thus, and, and thus far, the only candidate we've been able to vet is Bernie. He's the only one we've been able to vet, and uh, with Bernie, there are rumors, but the rumors are not true. We can say that with fact. Uh, and it, it doesn't mean that we agree with Bernie Sanders on his policy positions, but it does mean that we've looked into him, and the rumors are not true, and he's a viable candidate. Bernie Sanders is uh, the only one to receive the Will Berkman seal of approval as of now. So I, I want to open it up to questions. We're, we're dragging on here, but uh, why don't we... Uh, 
allow the press to uh, ask some questions. A anybody? Uh, let's start over there. Uh, you said that Bernie's the only candidate who's passed the seal of approval. Does that include the president? No, the, the president has, obviously the president's been vetted. The president has, has uh, already gone through an election. We're talking about on the Democratic side. Good question. Now, I, I would just say we're open. This is, the, the, as Jacob said, the president's been vetted in a hundred different ways. The Lord knows he doesn't need us to do that. But this is for all candidates in this election. This would be for other Republicans. It would be for all Democrats. It would be for independents. It would be for socialists. It's the Green Party. This isn't partisan. We open this up. We offer the Wool Berkman seal of approval. We offer our investigative services to any and all candidates of all stripes and sizes. So are you currently investigating any Republicans? Can't hear you. Are you currently investigating uh, Republicans, no. The, we have under investigation right now, as you know, Mayor Pete, and that's an ongoing investigation. And frankly, that's, that's an investi investigation that ranges from Miami to New York to Los Angeles to the Caribbean. Yeah, that's one yeah. Like, hey, you guys No, we haven't set up any protests. That, that, was an, that was internet troll stuff. People set up all kinds of stuff with my email. I get, I get emails from every bizarre subscription service you can imagine with the email address that I put out for the public. And, and as you can see, there's no protest. If we had put a protest together, there'd be a protest. Just to give you a sense of how, you know, you may know Jacob is the internet expert. Lord knows I'm not. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, Lord knows Jacob is our internet guru. Lord knows I'm not. But I will tell you that if you look at, there are these, Twitter has become nuts. There are all of these fan accounts and critical accounts. There are now hundreds of accounts about me and Jacob. That just shows you there are so many things going on in our name that are well beyond our control. Surefire intelligence and Potomac intelligence, that's, that's you guys are, right? Sure, Surefire intelligence is my firm. It's linked uh, from my website, jacobwold.org, my official website. And that's the firm under which I do all this consulting under. Now this Potomac, we had never heard about, uh, until we had reporters calling us up, and now they're calling us up with all these other websites. So that's just that's just goofy stuff. Jared. Uh, yeah, so you mentioned there's a lot of activity online, parodies, critical support. Do you think that uh, whether it be ridicule or support, this helps your cause ultimately? Well, it's hard to say, but our real, I mean, our only client in this activity is the truth. and. We want to get to the truth on all of these candidates and, and make sure that ultimately it can be a fair fight and the Democrats can have someone who has been vetted, who has, uh, you know, gone through the ringer and make sure that uh, insane rumors are, are not true. I mean, there's there's rumors that we're looking into and beginning to look into about Joe Biden's health, that he's very unhealthy, that he may have Parkinson's. We're looking into all of this stuff. I would say unless somebody steps up to perform this service, I can tell you right here and now Public confidence in elections in the United States is going to be destroyed. Unless somebody steps up with this kind of investigative service to vet and research rumors, you will reach a point in the next few years, the next few elections, where there's no further public confidence in elections. Finding the truth, this is one of the most essential things that can possibly be done in this democracy. The internet is exploding exponentially with all its facets, and it is a danger and a cancer to our democracy. So Jacob, you uh, basically you have this survivor, uh, this alleged survivor who uh, was alleging things against Mayor Pete, and then he changes his mind and says uh, those things didn't happen. And your explanation as to why is because you received threatening messages, and you purport to have seen them because you you referred to them as homophobic. Uh, so you must have seen them. Why why would you not release those actions? No, I, I'm talking I'm students? talking about this what? young man's parents who. Uh, I can only surmise, based on what I heard, are not okay with his his, his sexual orientation, and, and I heard these calls on speakerphone. Sadly, we did not. We should have had recordings or a video of some of this. We didn't. We weren't preparing for a rebutting Hunter that day, so we, we frankly didn't record very much. We weren't thinking, as you might guess, in that vein, but I can tell you, I overheard uh, calls, some of which might have been from his parents and family and friends, but some of which were from other people. I am not 90% or 95% certain, but I am 100% that he was talked out of telling his story. You, you talk about demanding uh, information from Daily Beast in order to kind of refute their claims. Are you similarly demanding information from 
uh, him, messages, whatever that would corroborate your claim? Well, Hunter's already given us a signed statement. So the, one of the first things we did that morning, uh, nine days ago, was say we, we worked throughout the night and then we woke up and we worked through a statement and we said, okay, Hunter, is this, this is what you want? He said, yes, he signed it. And then I said to him, and he'll verify this, I'm sure he will. I said, Hunter, before we move forward with this, the most important thing you can say is that I'm proud of me. Can you say that? Can you say I'm proud of me? And he boldly and enthusiastically said that and we hugged and I said, okay, Hunter, we move forward. Right, I mean, when an accuser comes to Jack as a lawyer, uh, his job is not to be judge and jury, his job is to zealously advocate on behalf of that accuser, and that's what we've done. Uh, but any, any other questions here? Will? Yeah, uh, a couple things, guys. Have either of you been interviewed by law enforcement related to either the fake death threats you told the Minneapolis police about, the Mueller smear, anything like that? Well, these episodes you, you characterize, I, I take issue with your characterization, but I can confidently tell you that we've never been uh, spoken to by police uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there's lots of rumors, like we said, some of them true, some of them not, but there is zero uh, truth to rumors that we've spoken uh, to police or anything. My other question is, Jack, you mentioned Jack's a lawyer. Has, is Jack facing any bar complaints right now? No, not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Jack, when was the last time you were in a, you actually practiced law in a courtroom? <laughs> we function mostly as public relations counsel. I do lobbying public relations. If there were litigation needed, if there were law enforcement action needed, we would sub that work out, bring in others. That's not what I do. When was the last time that you personally... Oh, my goodness. Uh, Jesus, I don't know. In the 1990s, somewhere in the 90s. Okay. I don't know. I used to be with the law firm of Holland and Knight many, many years ago, probably now north of two decades. Well, the, the Medium Post was taken down under a deluge of reports, uh, but as we've shown, Hunter confirmed that he was in control of the Medium account, that he was in control of the Twitter account. Hunter was DMing back and forth with uh, reporters online. And like I said, we do still believe, uh, and not just because of the fact that Mayor Pete was here uh, when he was here, and not just because the dates line up and the locations line up, but also because the way that Hunter told his story to us. He was very passionate. He was uh, very believable, as believable as anyone I've ever seen. And to how we ended up uh, hooking up with Hunter, um, he had been, had been a longtime follower of mine. And we had, as I said, put out there that there are these rumors and we're very concerned about Mayor Pete. And he came to us and said, these rumors are true and I can tell you exactly how and why I know that. And uh, laid out his story. All right, anyone else? Any questions before we wrap? Are you guys gonna do anything about the other investig- is the, is the Mueller investigation completely done? Uh, and what about Ilhan Omar? Like, what about all these other investigations? Uh, Omar is ongoing, Mueller is wrapped up and done. That's way in the past. Omar is ongoing. You'll hear lots more about that in the future. <laughs> so what is the final verdict on Mueller? Is it, did you guys get hopes? What happened? Oh, we, we stand behind all of our research, but we're just no longer involved in that. We've moved on to election 2020. And like I said, we've got a lot to do with 2020. We've begun, we have a wide ranging investigation with Mayor Pete and others should be beginning soon. So do you do you guys still think that Robert Mueller sexually assaulted this woman in the hotel? We just, we're not commenting on that further. That's not, that's not our purpose today. We're not going back uh, a year in the past. It's just, uh, we, our focus now is election 2020. We got a lot to do. Why do you think this keeps happening to you guys? You find these sexual assault <laughs> accusers, and then they say, oh no, Jack and Jacob made me make it all up. I mean, first of all, how can anyone take you seriously at this point? And second of all, I mean, you're clearly lying, right? So what's the deal? Well, we're not lying. We're telling you the truth. I can tell you with Hunter Kelly, I can tell you beyond the shadow of a questionable doubt, I believe his story will is true. I can tell you I heard with my own ears at least, at least a dozen threatening calls that he received with people using foul language, almost violent language, telling him, you cannot do this, you cannot say this. I heard it all day long. I heard nine or ten hours of those calls. F following up from before, you said that you didn't have the foresight to record those conversations, but you just said that there was nine or ten hours of it, and you never decided to start. Well, uh, you know, Hunter, it? we weren't uh, we weren't preparing for a day like this. We did not expect Hunter to suddenly recant and make allegations about us. 
we weren't preparing for this. We were preparing for Hunter's TV interviews that night that he himself was in the process of arranging. That's why we took him to the hair salon. That's why we were getting ready. Even I, absent recanting, wouldn't those still be important to hear the people who are threatening him over what oh, you're doing? Yeah, I mean, all of this happened very quickly. We only had one day with Hunter. I mean, we were our focus was on helping him to prepare to tell his story. There was a lot to do. I mean, we weren't we didn't have the time or the inclination to even think about recording Hunter. Right? Because you recorded him in your house in this kind of surreptitious video. I mean, what's the story there? Did he realize he was being recorded? Oh, I'm sure he did. I mean, we were, uh, I'm sure he did. And uh, I, you know, I'm glad we had that video. Like I said, it wasn't our focus for the day. You have to put yourself in our shoes and just think about this. I mean, we're preparing him for what we thought and he thought were national interviews that night, not the next day, but that night. We had to get our client ready for battle. And, you know, what, what I will add is that uh, you know, being being an ally of, of, of the gay community um, is not a popular position to take in right-wing politics. Uh, we take a lot of risk even if everything does go smoothly, that, uh, you know, the right-wing is going to, the far right-wing is going to uh, digest this. And um, but, but we have no regrets. We think that um, Hunter was a very believable guy. He had a, a story to tell. And we wanted it, uh, to help him tell that story. And of course, it's political. I mean, nobody's going to stand here and, and say that you know we want to help Democrats and hurt Republicans. Everyone knows that's not the case. Uh, of course, we want to hurt Democrats uh, with any material that we can find, as long as it's true, as long as there is uh, validity to that material. And that's why we continue to look at candidates and uh, you know put out the story. And apparently, many people did believe Hunter's initial truth because. If you look at uh, Mayor Pete's poll numbers, if you look at how he's doing in the betting odds, he has uh, suffered real serious damage in the past uh, in the past week or ten days. I mean, it's been uh, it's been a bloodbath in the polls. So the question I always get from people is, who's funding these guys? Where are they getting the money? How do they have time to pursue these smears sort of endlessly? So, I mean, are you receiving outside funding? Who's backing you? Um, well, the good news, Will, is honestly, it, with a lot of this is not that expensive. I mean, I have covered it all myself. We don't have a lot of costs. I mean, we, we again, Hunter came to us. This investigation of Mayor Pete, frankly, is in its early stages. Uh, it's, it's, could there be costs? Yes, I will cover them, but I don't really foresee very much. So oh, that, was, that was sort of an answer. Um, but let me put it this way. Are you receiving outside no, funding? No, not a dime. Not a dime? Not a dime, no. So it's all self-funded? Me. Yeah, I mean, this stuff doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Uh, and, and like I said, the only person that motivates us, the only person that uh, you know, puts us out there is the truth. If, if there were true rumors about you know, President Trump, we'd probably look into them, but he's been thoroughly vetted and people have seen what's happened to him with Gloria Allred paying accusers three quarters of a million dollars and, and everything else. Uh, but we are gonna look into Biden's health. We are gonna look into Elizabeth Warren's uh, alleged uh, fraudulent loan applications. We're going to look into all of these things. And again, we'd encourage the candidates to come here and just air this out because the, the, the court of the internet is a very tough court. Uh, whereas if they come here, they clear this up, they show us the records, they say, no, that, that was a confusion, my CPA filed that loan form, uh, then we can, we can put it aside. And the only person to do that so far to, to really uh, put themselves through the ringer like that is Bernie. You know, we do a rigorous vetting of just about everything, and I would tell you, when we first started talking with Hunter, one of the first things we did was take a look at the mayor's, get a hold of and take a look at the mayor's travel records, and the date at the Mayflower Hotel matched precisely, and that's one of the first pieces of vetting we did. And I would encourage, you saw the slide down there, and I want all of you to remember that and think about that. Any other questions here? Uh, just as a matter of kind of the record, is the security guard to your right the same individual who was behind you at CPAC? Yes. And is he with a security firm of some kind? Uh, we honestly, we don't comment on... We, we, don't we, don't, comment we, on we, can't, we can't comment on our security That's procedure. True. We don't comment. And we've got, you know, another security guard and things will be said, but uh, our security is very professional and competent. And we want us and you to be safe. That's why they're here. Right. Jared. Can I ask you about this setup? It's It's kind of confusing why we're talking up to a balcony and there's the screen here. It, I, what's, what's the 
mindset. Clarity. The only goal of this is clarity. We wanted you to be able what to hear us clarity. Is the holiday Inn not allowing you anymore? Uh, we just thought we'd be. We just thought that this setting works Don't best. Don't you like our beautiful street? <laughs> Anything else before we wrap here? Let's take two more maximum if somebody wants to ask. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. Uh, I was just curious, you're, you're talking about being allies to the gay community. Jack, didn't you push for a ban of gays on the, in the NFL? Uh, I, yes, <laughs> I, I did. I did that on behalf of a client five years ago. It was client work five years ago. and uh, I, I think everyone's views have evolved on that issue uh, over the past number of years, including Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. I mean, their, their views have changed, and um, you know, we're firmly on the side of the LGBT community. So, Jack, your, your views have evolved? My views have evolved. I mean, gay marriage at that time, I think I agree with the president. The su Supreme Court has spoken on gay marriage, and I think that issue is closed. Yes, last one. So, Jacob, you said in your uh, channel, your Telegram channel, that you weren't banned from Twitter for hate speech or violence. I was banned for tactics like the Russians, according to the CEO. When did uh, the Twitter CEO say that? That's on the Joe Rogan podcast with uh, Jack and... Uh, the head of uh, health and safety, or something along those lines, you, you can find it. Uh, Tim Poole asks them specifically about why I was banned, and they say tactics like the Russians. That's precisely what they said. All right. Well, uh, thank you all. Better wrap Thanks, up. Everybody. Thank, you. thank you for coming. Thank you. Internet uh, I'm probably going to do a site, but I'm going to be a